Let's talk about game design. You're in charge of an indie game developer with a dozen staffers. Congrats! So what kind of game do you make? To start, let's set aside the fact that you, the viewer, have been sitting on the world's greatest game idea for years and would make that given the opportunity. That's fine, but you might want to change your mind once I make my case. If you're an indie developer these days, you're going to want to build a roguelite. There are plenty of videos out there explaining the differences between a roguelike and a roguelite, so I'll keep things short and simple. Frankly, people call lots of things roguelikes that aren't roguelikes. According to the international body that determines the terminology, a roguelike is a derivative of the 1980 computer game Rogue, a text-based dungeon crawler that took a lot of design notes from Dungeons & Dragons. You wandered through boxy dungeons, quaffed potions, equipped items, and, well, got lost in dark rooms. A hit amongst the Unix crowd, the game was included in several BSDs. It took over a lot of college campuses in the early 80s before being ported to a variety of platforms, including IBM compatibles and the Atari ST. Roguelikes, then, are run-based, turn-based, combat-oriented action games that require resource management and exploration of randomized dungeons with all of your abilities accessible from the get-go. Primarily, this means roguelikes feature no metagame where you gain abilities through multiple runs, because there's an intent that you continue a single save across multiple sessions until you die or fail instead. A roguelike doesn't get any easier as you play, like a roguelite does. You get better. By all means, the strict definition means that only a handful of games qualify for the label. In recent years, Clay's espionage strategy game Invisible Ink and Kerberos's sci-fi dungeon crawler Sword of the Stars The Pit are some good examples of roguelikes. All that said, anything else that people consider a roguelike, which is pretty much every popular title out there, is actually a roguelite. Dead Cells, FTL, Splunky, The Binding of Isaac, on and on. These are roguelites. But don't feel down if you're feeling down. The designation should free you to explore some very interesting game designs and mechanics that wouldn't be possible if you were building a strict roguelike. So now I give you my pitch. These are the three main reasons why your indie developer should make a roguelite. Number one, versatility. While roguelite is a genre, it's really designed to be an enhancer of another genre, which means that developing a roguelite gives you a sturdy platform of mechanics to build a game upon. By definition, a roguelite is anything that pulls elements from a roguelike and mixes them with modern gaming conventions. So for the sake of our argument, let's say that our roguelite is run-based and has a metagame where you get progressively better, stronger, whatever as you play. So then, pick a genre. Any genre then make it a roguelite with those mechanics. There are so many genres that have never had the roguelite application. Why does it always have to be action games? Or science fiction games? Or fantasy games? What about a run-based visual novel? Or witness-style puzzle game? Can you imagine a run-based flight simulator where you upgrade your airplane to have vertical takeoff so you can get to your destination faster? You could make a strategy game where you manage an airline until you inevitably run out of money, but then you could hire lobbyists to help you get a leg up. What about a sports game where you play until you're injured? Racing games where you play until your car blows up or you run out of money? While not technically a roguelike, upcoming puzzle adventure game 12 minutes puts you in a Groundhog Day time loop where you approach a domestic situation with your wife 12 minutes at a time with new information each time you start over. You could do something clever like that. The possibilities are endless. This is truly some blue ocean stuff if I've ever seen it. There are so many ways you can fundamentally twist even popular games to make them roguelites and come up with something entirely new that I bet you've thought of three ideas already. Quick, write that design document. Number two, ease of production. If your roguelite is like any modern roguelite, you can be prototyping pre-alpha builds relatively quick. Think about it. Regardless of what kind of roguelite you're going to make, it's going to be run-based, so no one's going to be playing it for longer than an hour. You really only need to develop an hour-long game that's really damn fun and incredibly difficult. Enter the Gungeon, FTL, on and on, they're all hour-long games that you play over and over until you get better at the game or you unlock enough perks to make the game easier. Art is expensive in time and resources, so make the best of it. Don't get bogged down for years handcrafting bespoke content that's just going to get rolled over or rushed through. Build content that people are going to see over and over again and really appreciate. However, your production will face two primary challenges. The first is that you need to make an hour-long game that's fun to play from the first run. It also can't be beatable in the first run. It needs to encourage players to keep coming back. Before Dead Cells could be exposed to air by way of Steam's early access, developer Motion Twin made sure the game looked and felt amazing before they faced their second primary challenge, 
fleshing out content. Once you've got a game that's fun to play for an hour, you need to build the content that will keep people coming back over and over. That's an entire ramp of content you have to design, but hey, at least you've got a solid core of a game to start with. Number 3. Gamers these days are primed for it. Thanks to Zynga, King, and even Infinity Ward, gamers are already used to the dopamine treadmill. The days of store shelves filled with full price dozen hour experiences that you slip back into its jewel case at the end of the day are over. Even the biggest publishers understand that games are becoming software as a service and need more content on a regular basis to keep gamers happy. Why not just build your game around that fact? You can incorporate all the fancy animations and chugga chugga guitar riffs you want, but gamers these days love progression and roguelites are the Skinner box you're looking to build. Heck, even if your roguelites metagame doesn't make the game easier, just providing unlockable content that's useful and aesthetically pleasing will give gamers hours of entertainment easily. That's more IAPs, ad impressions, word of mouth, whatever you want to call it, it's good for you and your game. Now all that said, there are a few drawbacks to building a roguelite. For one, you can't really have a game that lasts much longer than an hour. It's not impossible, but you start losing that gameplay magic if you need to break your play time into multiple sessions and the narrative starts to get lost. It's also extremely difficult to develop complex narratives without an extraordinary amount of planning. What happens when that narrative is finished? What's going to bring people back? You're also developing a run-based game where the gamer needs to lose just about everything every hour or so to start over nearly from scratch. This isn't very conducive in a variety of genres or situations. I mean, imagine losing a long-held game save. How much would it hurt to start over with nothing or close to nothing, and what could you do to make that cycle bearable? If you figured that out, then the sky's the limit. Now again, you're gonna make whatever game you want to make with your indie studio, but I'm telling you, this is the prime time for roguelites. You may still spend three years making it, but you'll have a game people are going to automatically come back to over and over, and you'll be able to get it into early access relatively quick to increase your development revenue. There's an ocean of possibilities out there, and if you're lacking some solid mechanics, the Roguelike Toolbox is a great place to start. Good luck.